Hey everyone, this is uh, Pastor Will, and uh, thanks for hopping on this video. Uh, this is in our Romans uh, series, and uh, this week we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 1, verses uh, 18 through 32. And that's uh, for this uh, Sunday, the uh, 9th of October, is when we're going to be doing that uh, as a group during the worship service. Uh, and so, first off, I'd just like to encourage you, thanks for watching these videos, and uh, if you're in a small group, whether it's a women's Bible study, uh, whether it's a, some of the men's group or some of the, the one and other groups, that's, that's a great thing. And I would just encourage you to stay with those folks. Uh, doing things together is always better. And there's a reason why God gave the rest of us to, uh, to contribute with each other and, and encourage each other to pray with each other and do those types of things. Uh, I'd also encourage you to be looking out for other folks at church that maybe aren't a part of one of your groups and uh, invite them over to come and be with you. And if you're watching this and you haven't hopped into one of these uh, groups, we call them one another groups because um, uh, in in the New Testament, uh, through Paul's epistles, we're, we're encouraged to do things with each other. Like I said, pray for each other, uh, spur one another on the love and good deeds, uh, bear one another's burdens, those kind of things. And it's hard to do that unless you're with people. So I encourage you to think about joining one of those groups. If you, if you don't know anything about that, Steve, see, uh, Pastor Steve or myself or Pastor Van or Pastor Greg on, on Sunday, and we'll get you uh, plugged into one. So where we've been in Romans so far, uh, last week, uh, or actually the week before last, uh, Pastor Greg uh, went over verses uh, 16 through uh, 17. Uh, and it was an interesting thing that's really set up for what we're going to be talking about this week. The question was that uh, there, uh, or it's not a question, but Paul made a statement, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation. Right. And so um, what we're going to be looking at today is so that sounds great, but uh, why do I need that power and what am I being saved from? And uh, uh, so that's those are the questions that are going to be answered here in this last part of this passage. When I was in high school, uh, the uh, I lived in Los Angeles and there's this group called the Greater Los Angeles Area a Sunday School Association called GLASS. And they ran this great big evangelistic crusade. And they put all over Los Angeles these billboards that said, I found it, in black letters with a white background. And they had those up for a couple of weeks. And the whole deal was people were supposed to be thinking about, what did you find? And what was so valuable about it, right? And then we were all going to be uh, going door to door, knocking to people and telling them that what we'd found, which was Christ, right? And sharing with it. What we didn't realize, though, is uh, there was a lot of satire that came up with that. So other people started putting billboards up that said, well, I never lost it. I never needed it. I don't want to find it. And... Uh, because part of the deal was people didn't know what you were talking about and they didn't know what, what was this thing you found and who cares about it anyways, right? So part of the question here is, so we have the salvation, but who cares? Why, why do I need to be saved and why do I care about this salvation? Maybe there's a whole bunch of other salvations I could have as well too. So what we're going to get into in this next passage here is <laughs> the reason we need to be saved. And that's because you and I and... Uh, Everybody in your family, everybody you have ever known, everybody you ever will know, uh, are all in the same situation when we were born, and we were all under God's wrath. And that's not a word we use very often, the word wrath. Uh, and so part of what we're going to be talking about this next Sunday is, well, well, what is that? What is God's wrath? And why am I, why am I personally under this wrath? And, uh, and how bad is that wrath? What are the consequences of that in my life? And uh, is there a way that I can take care of that myself? Or uh, if I can't take care of it myself, then what are the ways that I can go about dealing with this if this really is a bad thing to be under the creator of the universe wrath? So that's, that's really what we're going to be looking at here in these verses. Um, there isn't necessarily an answer in these verses, in terms of how you resolve this wrath, uh, the, issue, the interesting thing is that 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 answer was given in sixteen seventeen. <coughs> we said, we said that God gives us that salvation, but really, what we're going to talk about today is why that salvation is so uh, important and valuable, and why we all desperately need that. And the reason is is because we're under this wrath of God. So um, take a look at that as you're doing your own personal study here, and you're talking about that in your group. I'd also uh, ask you to be thinking also about uh, a couple other things. And that is, um, you know, every, the first Sunday of every month, we have communion. We just had it this last week. And communion for us is a time to, for us to reflect on the fact that God sacrificed his son 
basically take the payment of that wrath for me or for you. And so one of the questions I have for you after you get done with the study is, how often do you consider the fact that you actually were under this wrath of God and how terrible a situation that would be? And how often do you really consider and think about uh, and, and maybe be in awe of the fact that that God was the one that took the terrible payment for your wrath so that you didn't have to do that yourself. Um, so after you've read through this passage uh, and considered some, think about, hmm, there's a lot of times we think about God's love, we think about his faithfulness, we think about uh, the future, the fact that he has an eternity for us and all the promises. But how often do we think about God's wrath and the fact that we've avoided that? So I'd just like you to think about that a little bit. The other thing I want you to think about is uh, just because uh, if you are part of, of uh, God's family and you've had that wrath removed through Christ's blood, um, we still have the opportunity to be fools and to sin and, and to turn away from God. And do you, how often do you consider about the fact that, that God's wrath really was against sin, right? Uh, uh, against things that, that offended him. And does sin really offend you now? Or have you found ways to compromise and say, no, it's not really all that offensive? And, and when, when you understand the context of, of this wrath of God towards our sin, um, does it make you angry when you sin in your life? Does it, does, it, does it scare you when you see somebody in your family or another believer, a, a brother or sister in Christ that is, that is sinning and turning away from God? Or is that something you've accepted? So think about that. And then the last thing I want you to think about is um, when you're around family or friends or somebody at work or or a neighbor that you have, and and you know that they haven't dealt with this wrath, right? You know that they're still under God's wrath because it's apparent in their life and maybe apparent in the fact that uh, they don't know this God that's willing to, 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 uh, to resolve this wrath through the death of his son. Are you scared for them? Does that bother you? If you were, uh, if you were on the bridge... Uh, coming out of town, we had a couple of different bridges going up 68 or 42, and, and you knew the bridge was out, and you saw somebody barreling down the road at 60 or 70 miles an hour, does it bother you that they're going to go off the bridge? Or are you like, oh, that's kind of interesting, I'm going to kind of just watch them as they're driving by and see what happens at that point. So uh, I just want you to think a little bit about, um, does, it, does, it, does it scare me for those people about the situation they're in and what the future holds for them? Or if it doesn't, why doesn't it scare me at that point? Just some questions to think about, too. Anyways, hey, have a great time as you uh, dive into these scriptures, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Thanks so much.